I gotta make some mounting brackets now for the sensors to detect the location of the dampening panel. So what do you call that? Uh, I guess dampening panel remote sensors. So this thing doesn't need to be strong. That's why I'm gonna recycle this old mounting bracket for the original driver. And I hope this thing doesn't wobble all over the freaking place. Okay, hopefully this works. Good. Nice. This was quite the complicated little bracket to make up. What we have here is one of the remote sensors for the dampening panel's location. So location sensor, whatever you want to call it. It's basically just a little switch that's mounted on a custom bracket that was very tricky to make up. And this will detect the location of the dampening panel. There's two of these, so one to detect the maximum setting and one to detect the minimum setting. And it will illuminate LEDs on the remote control to let you know to turn off the motor. As you can see, I have my little brackets all made up and mounted on the frame with the switches. It's ready for wiring up now. I can hear a little click. I doubt you can hear it on the camera. But it's definitely working. Cool. There's a lot of things I need to address with this plate reverb that are probably specific to this actual instance mainly because of my studio and its setup, and also because of various other things such as budget and time. So the biggest issue that I am about to face is how do you control the motor and also get feedback from the remote sensors up in the control room with only three cables. Now there's three cables only. There's two microphone cables and one speaker cable that go from the control room through the floor down to the plate reverb in the basement. Now that floor is 18 inches thick concrete reinforced with steel. And it took me forever to drill a hole through that with a hammer drill and a huge bit. I'm not gonna do that again. And even if I wanted to, I don't want to. But I can't pull the existing cables out and feed new ones down because I silicone them in there, and then I built a floating floor on top of it, so it's virtually inaccessible. All right, I believe that it is entirely possible to use these two microphone cables and the one speaker cable to be able to transmit audio in both directions and also transmit the high current DC to power the motor and the DC signals from the remote sensors just using these cables. And the concept that I'm thinking of is a variation of how phantom power works. I think this is going to work, but I guess I won't know until I try it, and that will be in a future video. So hopefully on camera it actually does work. <laughs> anyway, what I'm thinking is the uh, phantom power, uh, well, it's not phantom, it's going to be just 12 volts. And it's going to travel down, like we'll say the positive 12 volts will travel down maybe pin 2 of one of the XLR cables and then the negative will go down pin 2 of another XLR cable so that the DC signal is not traveling down both both wires of one microphone cable therefore on any specific mic cable it's not a complete circuit and the reason for that is because on uh, the receiving end up in the control room I don't want to hit the converter with 12 volts DC. I don't believe that it's protected by transformers. I'm sure it's not. So I don't know what's going to happen. It will at least cause DC offset, if not damage. So the best thing to do is to create some form of isolation. Obviously transformers would do it, but that's an added expense. And I don't really want to create a higher budget than I'm already at. I'm trying to keep the price down. So I believe the best solution is probably to create isolation by splitting up the DC signal so it's not a complete circuit on any given mic channel. Now down at the plate, there are transformers 
in the stereo output amplifier, and that's where I can split off the DC from the AC audio signal. Now we have two different sets of DC 12 volts. One is the power of the motor, and then the other is for the information coming from the sensors. So, as I said, the motor would be on, for example, pin 2 of one XLR cable positive, and then the negative would be on pin 2 of the other. And pin 3 of that XLR cable, uh, the first one would be for the sensors, and pin 3 of the other XLR would be for the sensors, negative and positive. So, I believe that this could, at least in theory, in my head, it works. We'll see, actually, in the future when I go to try it out. Now, the next thing that was a problem that I just figured out today was how do you get enough current flowing through that mic cable to be able to power a motor? So I took my adapter, which was a 5 amp adapter, I set it up in the control room on one of the mic leads, and went down to the basement and hooked up a motor to that mic cable's other end, and nothing happened. So 5 amps obviously was not enough to do it, and to tell you the truth, I didn't think it would be. I thought maybe 7 amps might do it. But as it turns out, I needed a whole lot more than that because the distance, I think, is probably about 50 feet. So I think the only solution at that point was like, all right, well, I could go the route of relays because then I don't need to have high current flowing down the cable. But that's going to require me to buy stuff and to I mean, really you got to have that on a circuit board. So that's even more of time and investment of money. And I thought, all right, what's the, the quickest, cheapest way to do this effectively? And that would be build a power supply using stuff that I have already. So I looked through my stuff to find the biggest power transformer possible. And I think you'll be impressed by the results. I need this monster of a power supply. <laughs> it is a freaking beast. This thing dishes out 20 amps of 12 volts DC. It is plenty. Let me tell you, it does work. I hooked up that motor. Zee! <laughs> we are in business, my friends. And this is just made from scraps. Uh, the, the case was used for two different other prototypes. So this is the third one. And the power transformer, I bought this for a power amp that I was building and I ended up not liking the results and so it went on the shelf to never be used until today. <laughs> Glad I found a home for it. Anyway, we are good to go.